Hello again and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at visual codes in media texts. Visual codes are another way that industries and creative individuals can provide symbols and ideas that can be then interpreted by an audience. We'll look at how audiences actually decode these symbols when we look at critical perspectives and audience. But for now, we're just going to talk about the features that are there and the kinds of things that you could see in terms of examples. One of the things you need to remember when analysing media text is that a lot of these symbols can be polysemic. This means there's a sign, but that sign could have more than one meaning. And there's lots of different factors that can influence how an audience decodes that sign and what conclusion they come to. So let's explore some of these visual codes and some examples of each one. As before, we're going to go through a small selection of these, so this is by no means a comprehensive catalogue of visual codes, but it does give you an idea as to some of the things that you can have a look at. So the first thing to consider is clothing. Clothing tells you an awful lot about a character. The most obvious example would be in something like Casualty, you know that a paramedic is a paramedic because they're wearing said uniform. Now they don't wear the uniform all the time, but in key scenes it would break up the narrative and feel a little unbelievable if someone had to explain they were a paramedic in some way. It would feel clunky. It's far better for them to arrive in an ambulance in a paramedic's uniform. You automatically then assume that the person wearing the uniform and driving the vehicle is a paramedic. This also provides expectations in terms of audience for the character's behaviour. You expect the doctor to act responsibly and to be caring. You expect a soldier to be brave. You expect someone who's in a very expensive suit to live a very expensive lifestyle. It's this basis of making connections that helps a creator encode a media text. In a crime scene drama, if someone walks in in a forensic white suit, you know what they're there for, you have expectations of their behaviour and therefore their actions. You pick all of that up without anyone telling you. This makes the narrative quicker and we can focus on the less obvious things and the more interesting things for an audience. Other visual codes you can look at are things like expression and gestures. When combined with technical codes like certain camera shots or camera angles, expressions and gestures can be really influential in terms of narrative and perception of character. Gestures and expression are also very important in media texts such as music videos because the performer can give an indication of the kind of representation they want to portray through their own gestures and body language. Colour is a key visual code and is used a lot very artistically in a lot of feature films but as well as that one of the key ways that colour is used is in advertising. Colour can be used to represent a smell such as in a lot of perfume adverts. Colour can be used to represent things like luxury or passion or calm. Colour codes are heavily used and fragrance adverts in particular are really worth looking at for this. You can tell if a scent is more floral and lighter and better for daytime. You can tell if it's heavier and muskier, more suitable for nighttime. And that's largely down to the colours that are being used in the advertisement. Images, especially in print-based media, are really important. Thinking not only about the placement of images, but the images themselves. So if there's a star celebrity on a particular magazine, then how have they been photographed? If it's a gossip magazine, it's likely the photograph is candid, maybe shot from a paparazzi camera. But if it's something like Elle, Harper's Bazaar or Cosmopolitan, then you may see a higher end photo shoot style photograph on the front of the magazine. And that links with the idea of brand identity that we touched on in audio codes and technical codes, but it also hints at how they want to represent the characters almost within their product. And all of these combined together, it wouldn't just be the image because the image needs to be constructed through lighting, through clothing, through gesture, through body language, and all of these things have to be combined together to create that brand and that brand identity. Iconography is object settings and backgrounds that carry particular meaning for an audience. It could be something as iconic as Big Ben being used in a news sequence, or it could be the Bake Off tent. But these locations carry particular significance and quite often they're related to genre. So you would expect a courtroom to be a particular location in a law drama. You would expect a lab to be present in a forensic crime drama. And 
as you can see, there's certain connections that you would make. And by making those connections, you can think about the certain weighting that those settings and, and sometimes objects particularly carry for an audience. And finally, graphics. It's certainly not something that should be overlooked. And if you think about the typography and the images used in the opening credit sequence of something like Panorama compared to a children's TV program, they wouldn't be interchangeable. And that's because those credit sequences give us an idea of the target audience and the kind of content that will be covered in that particular media product. So even by looking at the typography in an audiovisual production, you'll get an idea of the kind of program that it is and the kind of message that the creator wants to convey. So that's a quick overview of some of the visual codes that you can look at. Now I know that we've covered a lot in the last three videos, but by thinking about all of these things together, you'll get a truly holistic analysis of media texts. And it is useful to think about them in those three different categories, but only by interweaving them together and seeing how they work together will you see how media has truly been constructed for an audience and a certain response. One other thing to consider is the actual language being used in a media product as well. So as well as the codes that we've talked about, think about the lexis that's being used, particular subjects specific terminology but the level of that terminology that means it's still accessible to an audience that is not an expert this again is used in things like sci-fi crime drama and legal drama think about language features that are used in print media an interesting comparison will be the difference between broadsheet and tabloid newspapers and their headlines covering the same topics tabloid newspapers are particularly famous for making puns and using wordplay in their headlines Advertisements use lots of persuasive techniques such as hyperbole, statistics and facts, but skewed statistics and facts quite often. Magazines will employ exclamation marks and imperatives to make their articles sound urgent and important like you should be reading them now. An ellipsis is often used on the front of magazine covers to create what's called an enigma code or a mystery for the audience that they want to solve, which again encourages you to pick up the magazine and read the story. Quite often magazines will engage in the use of slang or informal language and colloquial language in order to engage in a more informal relationship with the reader. And quotation marks and direct quotations are used on the front of magazines in order to create a sense of authenticity and realism. Again, these are just samples, but they're language features that you can look for. And again, if you integrate those with the audio, the visual and the technical codes that we've already talked about, you'll get yourself a pretty holistic idea of media analysis and how media is constructed for an audience. So that's it for this video. I hope it's been useful. If you're looking for a particular type of video on media or film studies and you don't see it here, then please leave a comment down below or tweet us using the links in the description. And if you want to see more film and media talk, then hit the subscribe button down below as well. That's all from me. Thank you very much for watching.